The deed is done. Dun, dun, dun. Did you remember to give yourself a pat on the back? If not, maybe I can suggest a refresher by watching part two of this three-part repotting tips and tricks mini-series. Ooh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> now that your orchid is in the pot, after patting yourself on the back, Take a moment to enjoy knowing that the media is fresh, the roots are cleaned up, any pest concerns have been addressed and dealt with, and set a notice in your calendar to check on your orchid in two weeks, just in case previously existing pests are trying to make a comeback. But that does not mean that your orchid won't need attention throughout the two weeks. En contraire, there would be no post-repotting tips and tricks and care video if that were to be the case. So. Consider doing the following to ensure that your repot is not going to be for naught. No matter what media you have your orchid in, the biggest factor for the coming six weeks is to focus on flushing the pot regularly. When it comes to new bark, this is especially important because fresh bark will repel water for the foreseeable future and older roots are accustomed to the more water retentive media from the previous pot you just took the orchid out of. Now, fertilizing and supplementing is super important as well, but at a slightly lower level so as to help the orchid out with nutrients, but not the whole mother load of what it may have been able to absorb prior to the repot. As a matter of fact, many of the care requirements your orchid can tolerate while she was established in her older setup now have to be dialed down by at least 30%, if not 50%, depending on the state of the orchid prior to repot. This includes fertilizer, light, and extreme temperature exposure. So as an example, if your orchid could tolerate super high light, including direct sun, then what that orchid needs after a repot is bright shade, reduced airflow, and reduced fertilizer and supplements. The reduced airflow will become clear a little further on in this video. The reduction of everything that the orchid normally would have preferred prior to the repot reduces the after effects of our orchids post repot and the stress of having to cope with any extremes that could induce stressful side effects like water loss through transpiration of the leaves, aborting the new root growth because the orchid goes into survival mode and shuts down to protect itself from the extreme conditions basically to conserve energy, which could result in setback. The same applies with the temperature tolerance of your orchid before the repot. Dial those higher temperatures down a notch just to allow the orchid to recover, and if that means moving her from her usual location, then that is what you need to do. The one thing that you need to keep an eye on and possibly increase if you live in a drier climate or have a gross space with low humidity, ideally you want to raise the humidity around the repotted orchid. This will also limit the loss of moisture through transpiration and encourages the root tips to continue growing. You will be able to tell how your orchid is coping post repot simply by watching how the new roots are continuing to grow or not grow. Watch the structures at the back, especially the leaves. There may be leaf drop, pseudobulbs shriveling, and if you had to repot your orchid while in bloom, you may lose blooms prematurely. All these signs are normal and at the early stages of a repot should not be any reason for concern. However, to mitigate and reduce the continued stress signs, reduce the environmental influences just to help with the recovery process. You may also have to decide whether you want to cut off the blooms of your orchid if the repot timing coincides with her being in bloom. Sometimes the growth habit of the orchid is such that she is still in bloom, coming into bloom, or in the process of growing a spike as new roots are growing. While I advocate for eliminating any unnecessary energy consumption, which could stop the orchid on focusing on what we want her to continue to do, and that is grow the roots, cutting off spikes or blooms is a personal decision. If you opt to not cut off any blooms post repot, please make sure that you keep an eye on the new roots and if they show any signs of not progressing, then you will have to make that hard decision for the sake of your orchid so that the focus is on root growth as opposed to blooms. Remember that many stressed orchids will put all their energy into the blooms because it is in their DNA to bloom to reproduce. So if an orchid does not abort the buds or spikes and continues to bloom out, it is not an indicator that the orchid is coping well after the repot. The progress of the roots continuing to grow or the lack thereof, that is your indicator on how your orchid is coping. 
the flushing as post-repot care is the most important factor and that is why I mentioned it straight away. It is often something that is not taken into consideration and usually we tend to go straight back to caring for the orchid the way we did before because we know the orchid did well with the previous care. We continue to apply the normal fertilizer levels, same as high light, high temperatures, but we must never forget that we possibly removed a substantial part of a root system to make space for more roots, so the orchid has less to work with. We may have also removed some structures from the back to clean the orchid up or make her fit into a pot. We may have divided the orchid, so now your orchid does not have the same amount of energy reserves as previously and she doesn't have that many structures to support. So the fertilizer levels as per pre-repot may not be necessary anymore. And depending on the setup, the media is not as water retentive as it was before. So with the flushing, you will be counteracting the possibly drier environment for the still existing viable roots. Flushing also cleans the pot climate of any debris that is going to accumulate when it comes to a possible decline of the older roots. It also freshens the pot up on a regular basis. And we always hear that orchids need oxygen around their roots, but most of the time, this is always associated with oxygen in the air. Many times growers forget that water too has oxygen and the roots will pull that as well as what gravity does when we flush. Not only are we providing oxygen to the roots by way of water, but also by way of air being pulled into the pot because of gravity. Please, if you cannot do much else because of time not permitting, I encourage you to not skip the flushing as the main anchor for post repot care. And I say, depending on your environment, every three days as a minimum. And this also applies flushing being especially important when it comes to an orchid recently mounted. As the orchid is growing new roots which have not attached to the mount, no matter which material you use to mount your orchid on, keeping that mount free of any salt buildup is vital if we want to ensure that the new roots will find their way onto the mount and attach themselves without coming into contact with any left behind salts causing root tip burn. The fact that prior to mounting your orchid, you hopefully had her soaking in a solution of CalMag as per the recommendation in part one of this mini series, your orchid has enough nutrients in her to continue doing what she needs to do with the root growth. I flush my mounts by misting with the purest water I have, which is reverse osmosis water, seeing as my mains water is too high in parts per million. The best flush you can give your newly mounted orchid comes from Mother Nature in the form of rain. If you're blessed with an environment that favors good airflow and frequent rain, then take advantage of your conditions and let Mother Nature do the work for you. For all repots or new mounts, there is one supplement that I highly recommend to use on a regular basis and that is seaweed, just to keep the hormones going with the orchid. With seaweed, we can encourage the orchid to continue mobilizing her own growth hormones and boost those a little bit so that she does not even think about aborting any new root growth. Same as with any nutrients you apply post repot, keep the seaweed levels conservative. All you want to do is give your orchid enough to signal to her that she needs to continue on the path she was on before the repot happened, which also translates into the setup change if the orchid were to be mounted. When it comes to the different variables of what you can expect to happen to your orchid in the coming months, I highly recommend you check out a video that I've posted which covers post orchid repot signs and symptoms. It covers what to expect or what you may not know can happen no matter how well you have cared for your orchid. I will link that in the description along with part one and two of this repot mini series. And remind yourself that you are dealing with orchids and all our best intentions can end end up with something not going according to plan. The key to all of this is understanding what you could be up against and then proceed to intervene as and when and if necessary. Also remember that orchids are slow growers. The magic ingredient you can provide besides seaweed and vigilance is patience. Sometimes orchids will react in such a way as if nothing happened and then there are others that will just sulk for a little bit before they take off again. If you are in doubt about having to intervene again, I highly recommend you do not. The first two videos have all the steps you need to know about and if your repot timing was on point, then I recommend you leave the orchid alone. Know that it may take up to six months for an orchid to respond positively to a repot and in some severe diva cases, a full year. Should that be the case, then the old adage of the orchid is doing nothing is a good sign. Because remember that 
doing nothing also includes she is not declining. I hope that this was helpful and wish you a wonderful repotting season. But if you have any questions or doubts because this was quite general and you would like to get into specifics, let me know in the comments what challenges you are currently facing. If you've just repotted and worked it and you are kind of concerned about the ongoings or the non-ongoings of your orchid, let's continue the conversation based on your circumstances. And if you don't mind, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, the support is much needed and so appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.